everyone, this is Ross Raddy, and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast-style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk all about fruits, vegetables, um, the more uncommon fruits and vegetables, right? The more rare things, things you probably never heard of, uh, how to cook that and how to grow that. So, you know, that's what this podcast is all about. Um, so let's get started here. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ross Ratty, we're going to be starting a new playlist and it's going to be dedicated to gardening and it's going to be 250 days of gardening um, starting now because now in this current time in my season, um, it's cold, but you know what? It's uh, about three months away from my growing season and that means we can start things indoors. Um, and I'm going to be starting a whole host of different seeds very soon. We're going to be putting out different videos on that. In fact, right here I have just a whole handful of different seeds for those of you guys who can see me on YouTube. Um, all kinds of things. Tomatoes, melons, um, watermelons, you know, all different kinds of melons. We're going to be taking our melons so seriously. For those of you guys who've seen the other episodes of fruit talk we talk a lot about tomatoes i think we've talked a lot about melons for sure um we're going to be growing some eggplants artichokes squash pumpkins all kinds of different things guys and there's a lot of the stuff that we're going to be starting sort of now um and i'm going to go into really great detail into that but i kind of wanted to clue you guys in hopefully along these different episodes of fruit talk we'll certainly clue you guys in on what's going on in, in current times in my growing cycle so that you guys have an idea of what you should be doing if you're in my area or you know even if you guys are not in the area you know if you're behind or ahead you know this is about as early I think as you can get February 1st starting seeds indoors in my area some people definitely do it in January but um, you don't want to do it too early you don't want to do it too late so you know again hopefully you guys have all this stuff already picked out you got the seeds already in hand and you're starting this process along with me another thing I want to mention that's happening in more recent times is that we're gonna get very cold here we talked I think about this last week we got down to 8 degrees Fahrenheit um, which is not that bad it's pretty mild for my area normally we get down to 0 degrees Fahrenheit here in zone 7a um, in the greater Philadelphia area. Now, coming up in just a day or two, uh, I think it's Thursday morning, we're going to get down to probably four, three, maybe even five degrees, which isn't still really all that bad considering zero is um, where we normally are, but I would say uh, it's still not a, you know, a great thing. Um, I definitely prefer eight over five or eight over three. So um, I think there's a big difference between 5 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Fahrenheit, and 10 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, all those, even just one degree makes a huge difference in what can survive and what can't. So, um, you know, it's just the normal part of the winter time. but I wanted to clue you guys in on that. And uh, we did talk about a couple weeks ago on the YouTube channel how we are handling that. Um, that cold temperature with our figs um, this week we're coming out with a video on how those cold temperatures will affect the uh, the tea plants that I have outside camellia sinensis and camellia sinensis is that tea that we're all used to it creates green tea black tea white tea all of that so um, you know they're not necessarily supposed to be able to survive here in zone 7 but uh, there are some varieties that I've found that and I put them in a pretty good microclimate, a bit of a warmer spot against the house. Um, and we're just going to go into detail in that video of how we are protecting them uh, during this four degree low that we're probably going to have. So, um, yeah, so st stay tuned for that. Um, some other things I want to mention now, and I want to talk about citrus. And this is, I guess, the big thing I want to mention in this video. Um, recently, a, a viewer commented on one of my videos and suggested that I try out the yuzu citrus, saying that it's hardy to zone 7. Um, it could be a nice alternative to using limes or lemons in the kitchen and that you should look into them. So I did. Um, I'm still uh, pretty much unsure of whether or not I'm going to try these, but I know for sure 
there is also the trifoliate orange or flying dragon this is the rootstock that pretty much every citrus tree is grafted onto because it's so hardy it's well adapted uh, but the fruit that the flying dragon produces really isn't all that great um, it may take a number of years for it to produce if they're grown from seed which most flying dragon uh, rootstocks are obviously propagated from seed so um, you know it, it's just a, a long process to get the fruit but the fruit could be um, worth it right it says the fruits here are inferior to lemons being seedy resin like and not juicy uh, not to be eaten whole uh, or fresh so I guess it's not really the best um, alternative to a lemon or a lime but if you are in a colder climate this is something you could grow you could certainly grow it in zone six I know quite a few people that have have these or have had these on their property and have you know they're pretty much unbothered by pretty much everything here in the north um, so this could be a nice little alternative uh, but someone has certainly recommended yuzu which is also supposed to be hardy to zone seven um, you know I don't know how proven that is unlike the trifoliate orange but I guess the yuzu could be a nice little alternative to um, lemons and limes prized in Japan for flavoring juice and preserves this hearty variety bears abundant easy to peel three inch diameter fruit with tasty lemon lime flavor apparently hardy to zone or to zero degrees Fahrenheit so if I could uh, definitely put these guys in a nice little location I may have some pretty good success it says here we've had good success growing them outdoors here in Portland Oregon and similar to the Camellia sinensis that I have outside in a protected spot I could put this in a similar spot but do a similar thing that I'm doing to the the Camellia sinensis is that I could just throw over a tarp throw over some moving blankets just put something on top of the citrus tree on those really cold nights just to help it get through those those lows you know if I can get it through zero degrees to five degrees to even ten degrees just help it out in any way you know you can't wrap these things like you can a fig so um, you know the fig goes deciduous drops its leaves you wrap it with a tarp everything's okay but these are evergreen right they keep their leaves all throughout the winter time and it's really important to let them be exposed to the sun so um, you know I don't want to basically take off all the leaves off of my tree by um, by wrapping it in fact that would create a lot of humidity and would totally rot the tree so um, it would definitely be a problem if it had leaves on it but definitely covering it with you know one or two days of the winter time or you know five days of the winter time as, as an you know and as an example um, is certainly going to be a nice solution I think so I'm going to look more into these, and if anyone has any um, expertise, please let me know down in the comments of this video, or send me a private message. You know, whether that's on uh, any of my social media—Facebook, Instagram, Twitter—let um, me know somewhere. Uh, but here's another one here: Sudachi Hybrid Yuzu. That One Green World is growing, and this is a nice little um, hybrid between a, a mandarin and a yuzu. Very flavorful juice. Unique spicy juice from golf bowl size sudachi fruit is uh, used to flavor soups, fish, and even ice cream, other desserts, high in vitamin C. Um, it seems like uh, One Green World, they're located, I believe, in, I think it's Oregon? Yeah, Portland, Oregon. So if they're having pretty good success with yuzu in Portland, Oregon in the ground, um, there's no telling you telling me how successful I could be in my climate so um, I may actually consider the yuzu less likely on the trifoliate orange but uh, again if anyone has any information I'd love to hear about it and that's pretty much concluding this episode of fruit talk I want to thank you guys for watching um, if you haven't already please subscribe to the YouTube channel Check out the website, guys, at rossratty.weebly.com. We have a nice little blog that goes on there that's really in-depth information, different from your typical podcast or video that I do on YouTube. So 
Um, check that out, guys, and I'll catch you all for the next video. Um, see you for see you next week. All right, take care.